Okay, guys, here we go. Question four. So the continuous random variable x is uniformly distributed over this interval alpha and beta. So this is clearly a uniform distribution with these parameters. Now, given that the mean is 3.5 and the probability that x is greater than 5 is 2 fifths, let's find out what a and beta is, yeah? So first things first, with these kind of questions, always parameterize, yeah? Always say what the, the density function is. So fx is always given to be um, 1 over beta minus alpha. The function fx, the big F, the cumulative one, is always um, x minus alpha over beta minus alpha. So you just integrate it and you'll get this result. And the last thing is the mean. So the most one of the more relevant ones is um, half of the of the sum of these two. So it's, it's just the midpoint. Because it's uniform, it would be bang in the center. So beta plus alpha. Okay, easy. So we can actually work out this straight away. But just have a clear idea. Um, for the first one, ex equals 3.5. This means that um, this part here, ex equals 3.5. So we can easily solve that. So we can say, can I go down? No, nope, not too much. So I can say half beta plus alpha equals 3.5 times it by 2. You can just say beta plus alpha must equal 7. Okay, so let's consider the second one now. When probability x greater than 5 is 2 fifths. Okay, so what does this mean? So this means if x greater than 5 is 2 fifths, this function fx is firstly, what is it equal to? It's equal to property x is less than equal x. This is a formal definition, yeah? If you don't know this, this means that it's accumulating all the way up to x, okay? That's what it means. So, but because we've got this side, we need to flip around. So we need to take property x less than equal five, which would be the other way around, so it'll be three fifths. Because you think about it, all the values of x up to five, plus all the values of x greater than five, will give you a whole number. So two fifths, three fifths seems logical. Now, what can we say? So this means this function will be equal to this. So we can say 3 fifths will be equal to the fx1 at the point 5, at f5, yeah? So when x is 5, so oh yeah, another formal definition is, is that f5 means probability x is less than or equal 5, yeah? That's what it is. Also, it might be useful. This is also officially known as a survival function. So it's a property of survival. You learn this in more advanced probability, not in, in um, what we're doing. And this is the same as probability x is greater than 5. It's just the reverse. If you sum with the cumulative and the survival, you get 1. But yeah, let's get back to the main problem at hand. So this means for part A, 3 fifths will equal this at 0.5. So we're going to have uh, 5 minus alpha over beta minus alpha. Ooh, and you can see that this is going to be a bit long. So what I'll do for the first equation, or just to make life easy, cross multiply, so times 5 across and beta minus alpha across. We're going to have 3 beta minus alpha equals 5 times these guys, so 25 minus uh, 5 alpha. Now, what we could do is uh, make, let's see, hmm, let's make beta, let's make a beta the subject here. Okay, actually let's make, let's make beta the subject here. So we're going to have beta equals 7 minus alpha. So just a case of simultaneous equations, yeah? So plugging this in, we're going to have, um, let's expand this, 3 beta minus um, alpha, 3 alpha equals 25 minus 5 alpha. So, so 3 times 7 minus alpha, so this would be 21 minus 3 alpha. Minus another 3 alpha, we get minus 6 alpha. Okay, and this is equal to 25 minus 5 alpha. I really need more space, don't I? Okay, let me just get this out of the way. Okay, so continue this equation. So just plus and 6 alpha across and subtracting 5, we should get exactly 1 alpha on the right side. Minus 25, we get minus 4. So alpha seems to be minus 4. So if alpha is minus 4, that means beta automatically is 11. All right, sounds good to me. Okay, part B. So given that property x less than c is 2 thirds, Find the value of firstly C and then find the property that X lies between C and 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and tackle the first problem first, yeah? And also, let's try and um, represent this. That's the most important thing. First, notice that this one is again the um, accumulative distribution function because it's written in the less than form. So property, so FX is always the same as X less than equal X. 
This is literally the formal definition, yeah? So in this case, what does this mean? So property x less than c, x less than c, which is in this case the same, is going to equal the function at the point c, which we already know is two thirds. Now the function at the point c for uniform distribution is, is always written like this. It's always c minus alpha over beta minus alpha. Usually it would be x, but this is the uniform distribution definition. Now, let's move forward here. So we already know the values of alpha and beta minus alpha. Again, this all equals two thirds, yeah? So what do we say? So let's see. Simplifying this, so we're gonna have now c minus minus alpha, so c plus four over beta minus alpha. So 11 minus minus four is 15. This must equal two thirds. Now you just solve to find c. So solving this, um, let's see, let me just bring this up. Yeah, I've got space up. So we can say c must equal, so it will be 2 thirds times 15 minus 4. So 2 thirds times 15 minus 4, and I get 6. So that bit is done. So c equals 6. So I'm going to use the space up here. So now we're going to find the property that c lies, that x lies between c and the 9. So we just need to think carefully how to write this. So we can think of this as firstly, all the values that lies between c, which is 6, or my right c, between 6 and 9. So let me think. It could be written as firstly, the property x is less than or equal to 9. Minus, so this is all the values up to 9 minus all the values up until 6. The reason why we choose 6 and not 5 is because, because it's continuous, it includes 6 and bits of 6. So we just want all the values just below 6, literally. But again, we continuous doesn't really measure single points. It measures like a range of values. That's why we use it. And this is easy. So this is just literally going to be now the function at the point 9 minus the function at the point 6. We already know what the function point 6 was. It's 2 thirds. Now, function at point 0.9, well, it's the same formula. Just plug in 9 for x. Or, well, you know what, let me just make it again the same way. It would just be the cumulative function, so it would be 9 minus alpha over beta minus alpha minus the 6 version, which is uh, 2 thirds. So, alpha, beta minus alpha, so it would just be 9 plus 4 over 11 plus 4 minus 2 thirds. So, smash this in your calculator, guys, and we're done. So 13 over 15 minus two thirds. Yep, and I got ooh, one fifth. So that means the pro that means this solution here is one fifth. So I can see the difficulty of these problems. This is all about algebra manipulation, you know. So it's a bit intense. There's a lot of things going on, but as long as you know the formula, you just have to make sure your algebra is on point and just be careful, guys. Yeah. And we we'll see you in the next one. Okay, final question of uh, number four. So a rectangle has a perimeter of 200 centimeters. The length S centimeters of one side of this rectangle is uniformly distributed between 30 and 80. Okay, let's just take a note of that. We can say, oops, not X. We can say that S is uniformly distributed between 30 and 80. Now, find the probability that the length of the shorter side of the rectangle is less than 45. So this is kind of like a bit of arithmetic. I mean, if you're going to find property one side is shorter than the other one, then the other, one, then the other side must be longer to guarantee a, a, a perimeter of 200. So let's just have a think about it. If we drew a rectangle right now, and we want to guarantee that the side, let's say is 45, is, is less than 45, this means this length must be greater than 55. Why? Because we want to have a total perimeter of 200 in the end. These two make 100, so these two must be 100. So whatever this is, this will be the remainder. So effectively, to guarantee this statement, we need to ensure that this probability and this probability both hold to guarantee 200 um, centimeters. So let's say that. So we can say find the property that S is less than 45 plus the probability that S is greater than 55 centimeters. We ensure that we're going to have 200 centimeters. Now, what is this? So this is just simply um, the uniform um, function, the cumulative function. So we can say with our parameters, 30 and 80, we can express this one as um, F45 plus, and this is actually 
1 minus f for f 55 okay so that's what we have here this one is easy this is just 45 minus alpha which is uh, 30 over beta minus alpha and then 1 minus and same thing here so this would be 55 minus alpha over beta minus alpha so i'll just make a note there so that's how it works and the uniform distribution is given to be 30 to 80. so actually this wasn't too bad we just have to guarantee this these proportions really now putting this in the calculator well this should give you three times this should give you half so effectively three times plus one minus a half should give us four fifths and that's it guys this is the end of the paper uh end of the question